It's still Plus Sports and Plus TV Africa. And of course, this show brings you the best of top analysis on stories breaking the world of sports. And I've got Henry Equarri right here. And of course, a lot has been said about football development in Nigeria. And it seems to be sounding like a broken record because there seems to be no improvement. Now, Henry, what would you say um, the major problem is with our football? And how do you think we can make it better? Thank you very much, Luca. Um, that's a very pertinent question. Just like you said, Nigerian football, African football needs um, improvement. It's becoming a cliche. Now, um, basically, I think what we lack is direction, mm. excellence, and organization, mm. um, and reorientation of um, players, owners, and even fans, Nigerians at large. Mm -hmm. Football is wide. But we are leaving it for, there are so many entitlement and responsibilities that is the government's responsibility. But if you look at um, things that in the established world, where, uh, where we look up, to as, look up to football as a standard, yeah. the government regulates. It's, we, it needs, we need to find a way to build it to a point where people can, um, investors can come into the game. Right now, we're struggling with um, funding. Mm -hmm. Very true. And we know that you run a football club, Atlantic Business Football Club. Um, tell us, uh, what, what, when was this football club established? Um, 2017. Mm -hmm. started, initially, it was called Atlantic Football Club. Mm -hmm. um, having joined the league, joined um, grassroots football tournaments, and gone around Nigeria, I, I, I found out the reason why um, um, why football cannot even progress. Mm. I found out I myself was frustrated, I was stagnant. I tried to join the amateur league, I played hun paid hundreds of thousands, about half, over half a million to get the slot. And mm. the tournament is meant to happen in a week. Wow. It, 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 it's amazing. So I got frustrated to the point and I said, we need to start looking for a, a Nigerian solution to a now Nigerian problem, the Nigerian way. Mm. And um, just like Corona, we need an Afrocentric, a Nigerian-centric approach to mm what we do so um it started in 2017 and we but we've um um we've um transformed now to atlantic atlantic business football club the business i get a lot of questions i've never had business in football club i've yeah. never had business in football club i tell them it's intentional we need to be able to grow football to a point where it's it stands on its own and players are, are in their home league and they're playing and they're comfortable they aim Right now, Sterling in, in England is playing in his home league. Mm. PK is playing in his home league. Yeah. So we need to grow to a point where it, it's profitable for Nigerians. And I have a company on my own. I have my IT consultant. and I have a company now. For, I cannot grow my company the way I've grown it. And now go and invest, and go and invest into, um, um, some, into something that is shabby. Yeah. So excellence is a, is a language. So, and people, there are people that understand it. I could speak, you could speak in Yoruba to me right now. You're communicating, but if I don't understand you, but if I don't understand you, I don't understand you. So if we can just, I want to just, we want to just be able to sensitize these players, sensitize the fans that this is a business, this is a company, we're selling football. So that's what we're trying to do right now. Mm. All right. Uh, now, still talking about um, grassroots, I understand um, what you're trying to do with the, the football club now. Well, a lot has been said about grassroots and its challenges. I'm sure your, your club as well has faced a lot of challenges as well. Because I know a couple of football clubs in the Nigerian Professional Football League uh, on how they manage these players and they spend millions every week just to cater for feeding of these players. Do you go through the same challenge? Very much. I mm. even go because I'm a grassroots football trying to standardize. Mm. Um, it's finance is one huge um, is one huge problem we face. Mm. You need to transport these players around Nigeria yeah. for tournaments. If you need to their welfare. There's a lot people don't know about that happens in the football life. Just okay. trying to stand the team. Um, amongst that is not even the monetary side of the, I understood the challenges I was going to come and face. So I won't call it a problem. Or I knew it's a challenge, and mm. I'm willing willing to. Um, go head on with it and um, simplify the stress. Anything that you can simplify, once you can simplify the stress, it becomes easy. So I know it's a challenge, but the major problem again is the reorientation, the mentality mindset. That is mm. my own problem I'm facing. True. I believe if to make money in football and to regulate and make it a point of revenue is very easy. Mm -hmm. But if we can have the right mindset, the ability is not a problem right now, but mm. the main problem I'm having is mentality. And not just in football, cut across even the staff, my staff, my staff um, workers. Orientation, mentality. So, sure. 
in Etiosa right now, they, a lot of, first of all, one major problem I faced was when I came, I was trying to set a football club. Mm. Definitely my own aim was different. I want to set up a team here. They said, who is this young man? Come on, I want to travel. I want to travel to Europe. Everybody, the pressure of send my child, out, I want to travel, I want to travel, I want to travel, <laughs> was one thing I was like, are you will travel. Tra selling and buying of players is a function mm. that happens in a team. It is a, no, is a, is a given to happen. Yeah. It's not, it's not, but it's not the aim of why I want to do it. Most people that are into the business, they want to manage a player because Victor Simeon signed for 3.5 million euros. Mm. They want to go and get another player and stuff. But no, it's football. the same football they are playing in Europe, it's the same football they are playing, the same grass is not different. It's, Sterling was playing ball on the street and he was scouted. Mm -hmm. So I, I see a lot of players going to go and do trial, go and try, go and try. If I'm right, talent, you don't, you, you look for talent. Mm -hmm. You source for talent. Mm. So scouters are meant to come and look for you, but how you present yourself again is how you, and it goes across to African players. You see mm. seminars being saying, okay, how to live abroad for players, how to survive abroad, how to survive abroad. So it's already a mentality that if you don't travel out, mm. you can't succeed. Now there's Corona. This yeah. proved a very big point and my, my players are beginning to listen to me. Some players had contracts already to travel to Israel, to, to a couple of places. Corona came. Everybody's mm. in your country now. Mm -hmm. So are you going to cry? I, is he your, embassies are closed. You can't play. Now, those Israel companies, they're going to cut down your contract. They want to look into their home league. Corona is now aware. So now, what happens now that you're in your father's land? Mm. Can you play in your father's land and be happy and play in your own father's land? Mm. It's not my fault now. Corona has made it happen. <laughs> has made it happen. <laughs> well, uh, we, we, we'll get to come back to that because a lot of things are actually going on wrong with our football and sports in general with the uh, country. But I just hope that very soon, someday, with shows like this, we can help change the narrative. If we talk about grassroots and we're not taking care of the grassroots, how can we develop our sports? So um, you just hit the nail on the head. Um, Grassroots, can, the, the impact of grassroots football in the hierarchy of football growth can never, can never be very mm -hmm. emphasized. Look at the likes of Indidi, um, um, Victor Simen. Yeah. They all were scouted from grassroots football. True. Catching them York is very, very important. The UK now just gave a, 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 a grant now to support their grassroots football, to mm -hmm. catch them York too. So it's very necessary we catch we get we, we take care of the grassroots football mm. but now again it's let's not look at because the name is grassroots root i think again we need to start those names are, that's why i changed my name to business football club mm. that grassroots again is has a mindset of okay, you're looking call it something else first of all that's a sensation of let them not see it like um it's just a way we just try hope for come and scout us no even grassroots football can generate revenue mm -hmm. serious revenue True. so it needs to be not we need to look at it as football as is entertainment, is a sport. Mm -hmm. But what is the business side of sport? Mm -hmm. Music is an entertainment, but it's the business angle of it. Every entertainment, every everything that entertains, that makes people happy, mm -hmm. should be able to be monetized. So if we're not monetizing the having, then there's a problem. True. So from if just like the society, you need to take care of the family first, mm -hmm. the foundation before from the society, from the family forms the society and moving forward, it comes nation. So also so grassroots to a mature to pro level. So mm -hmm. foundation must be taken care of well because mm. you can't be the money given to in for, I think four percent that the federal government gives to um, football yeah. is just focused on the um, high level and mm -hmm. MPL. So grassroots football needs to excellence is still the word is excellent mm. attention to detail um, organization. We need the people. Most people that I know that are going are into grassroots football wants to wants to trade. Wants their aim is just to move for money to trade, sure. and there's nothing wrong with that. But as much as we're doing that, how you present these players mm. determines their value, mm -hmm. because the talent is valueless. So, if if I for one now I'm working towards to break to make it to make a mark in football, and I think mm. it's possible. What, what is it? Victor Simen is the highest signing from three point four three point from grassroots to professional level for three point yeah. five million euro. I think I can do 20 million, I think I can do 9 million, I can mm. do far beyond that. But it depends on how you package these players. So I think it needs, um, it needs serious attention. It can never be over overcised. And yeah, it needs to be looked into seriously. Mm. Very true. Now, Atlantic Business Football Club, um, what will be your contribution to grassroots football? How would you um, help these players get to greater heights? Yes, Victor Simon will talk about where he started from and look at where he is now. He's playing for Lille at the moment. And there's going to be a possible move to 
um, SS Napoli in Italy, mm -hmm. where he'll be uh, the transfer will be worth around 81 million pounds. So, what will be your contribution as um, Afri uh, Atlantic Business Football Club to grassroots football? So, my contrib our contribution basically is to showcase talent. Mm. Like initially, we were an academy. I told them I'm no longer an academy. I want to showcase talent. And the idea is, I want we want to own the presentation of our games. The idea of the business football is um, we want to get same teams that same club owners that have like mind that believe and trust their talent. Mm. We, 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 because playing all these tournaments initially, I said, what's the aim? You pay for a competition 200,000, over 20, 60 teams are there. The finance is one millionaire at the end of it. What's the aim mm -hmm. of all this competition? I'm like, what's the aim? I, I like to ask the questions why. So our, our own is, what we're trying to do is, um, there's a saying, Messi is the best player, right? right? But I believe Messi is not the best player in the world. He's the best known player. True, because some other ones are, are undiscovered. Are undiscovered. So, and there's a saying that says the best player, the best known, the best player, the best player can never beat the best known. The best known product can never beat the best product. Mm. The best product, sorry, can never beat the best known product. Known product. So attention, and what in, one thing Corona has um, taught us is attention, money flows attention. Mm. Attention is expensive. How do we get attention? The idea of doing the business is to, if you can get like minds that can stick, let's play football. It's not even about the money, but people like the spice to all these things. And that's just the idea, just to spice it up. But now it's business. Let's play business football. And, but now showcasing talent. You're not just looking at Atlantic Business Football Club. Mm. A club owner that has a like mind of, he trusts his talent and he's able to put that money forward. You're going to see good football and mm -hmm. want to own the presentation of games now. Proper presentation. If we're mm. going to do live streaming, so the media backing and to just show contribution of present these players and give them a, a chance. Yeah, mm, very true. Now, um, lastly, let's talk about um, solely Atlantic Foot Business Football Club. Now, uh, a lot of players. I, I know you mentioned this earlier. A lot of players are hungry to travel to Europe. They are they're hungry for greener pastures. Uh, a lot of them even eventually sign the wrong contracts. They sign slave contracts just because they want to travel. When they get it, it dawns on them when they realize that they were not supposed to make that move quickly. Now, for Atlantic Business Football Club, what are your uh, major aims? Now, because we talk about the NNO, we talk about the NNL, we talk about the Nigerian Professional Football League. Are you hoping someday to feature in the Nigerian Professional Football League? And how um, strong do you hold on to your players, hoping not to lose them to, in quotes, bigger clubs? So now, um, because of the structure of FIFA, everybody asks this question, how do you want to structure? So right now, we're registered with the Lagos FA, which gives us a um, guarantee that um, as, a, as a grassroots football, I can't call, we are, I psych my players, we are professionals. Hmm. But by the status of where we are right now, we still give them stipends and allowance. We're not paying them what the government says. If you're going to call yourself a professional football club, you need to be able to pay your players a stipend of at least the minimum wage of Nigeria, which is 30K. Mm -hmm. So if you can achieve that, you cannot have the status of semi-professional. And the, the FIFA's constitutions, you, you're meant to now loan them to a professional club, side yeah. so that they can have that status. Now, the, for, to, right now we're secured. Everybody, we are, we are registered, we, have, we are trying, we are registered with FIAM, with the intermediary, just to secure these players. But coming into the league, just like I said, we played it, we, we paid over half a million mm. to come into the, to, to have the status of, wow. of, to be in the league amateur two and start going from there. But I found out that, I said, this is total rubbish. Mm. And it's, without no insult or anything, but it's, it, it, it doesn't make sense. It's going to happen in one week from all over. It doesn't make sense. And you go to, go, you now move to the, they say they promote you. Now, we want to own, there's a, there's a plan, Atlantic Business Football Club, we want to own our own league. The, and it starts by small, we want to start owning it from little games. We want mm. to own our own league. And we're going to call it the Elite League, the Money League. Okay. Stay tuned for it, I'm going to come back and talk about it. Mm. So there's a plan to, NPFL is not our standard. Okay. And the only reason why people are looking at NPFL is because the government is paying those players. Sure. So we have a plan to pay our players now. We just were launching an ABFC Logistics, which is, is people sell merchandise jerseys to support the club so that the club club concert. I think you can also sell services mm -hmm. from a club. And our aim is to be able to pay these players and make them comfortable to increase your value, pay these guys. But how do we get the status? I don't want to, I'm not, to get sponsorship is very difficult. Everybody knows that. Sure. It's very difficult. I've worked, I've got, bros, I don't work out. Mm -hmm. I've gone around, I've 
people tell you this, my lead, that, that. So the only reason I said, okay, I have to think, we can't stop doing what we're doing. We have to be strategized. I come from a corporate environment. I see how people build sister companies to support one company, everybody. There's money flowing around. I said, why can't I replicate it in, in football? Mm. We've, well, we've gotten over four bikes. We are trying to, there's going to be, there's, this corona is, everybody needs to be strategize True. their approach. I agree with you. So there's going to be lockdown of Todd Milan Bridge um, for six months. Pick up and deliver is going to be on the high rise. Mm. I said, can't we? We did a, a math of, okay, if we're getting a bike for 290, how much we, we gross in a month? How much we gross in, how much we, and we found out that it's exponential. And we found out that we, at the point, we don't, I don't have to start keep on spending my personal money. Mm. I want, I've been always looking for a point where the club is self sustained. And what mm. gives it status is income money. True. True. So our plan is, we have a plan to, change the narrative, again, change the narrative to tell these guys, and God, I thank God for Corona, at least it makes them to understand that, that thing you're saying, and you're saying, it, they've seen it, they're beginning to understand, understand it. Mm. So people now, they buy in, and the commitment now is, I love it, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's good. Mm. So I believe right now that in, this, in a short period of time, if things, God gave us principles to succeed, mm. the mentality of people are, are ego fee failure, and you know, mm -hmm. it needs to stop. You can, you, the way you can plan to fail, you can plan to succeed. Mm. We are being deliberate and conscious that's why the business is there, is a sensitization. We are deliberate to put ourselves out there to see if MPFL will invite me to the league. Mm. Wow. That's a big one, and we're hoping that that actually comes through for Atlantic Business Football Club. We'd love to see them uh, play in the Nigerian Professional Football League, and of course, uh, uh, we wish you success in all your endeavors. Thank you very much. And again, thank you very much for coming down to join us on the show today, and also speak on grassroots and your plans for grassroots football and, of course, Atlantic Business Football Club. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.